Very good evening, everyone. Am I audible? Very good evening, one and all. Am I audible? I hope I am audible right now. Please mention in the chat box, am I audible? Welcome back to our 21 days masterclass series on autonomous vehicle. I hope you are all doing well and had a productive day. I hope I am audible right now. Very good evening all. Good evening Shailesh Kumar and Bharat Raj. Good evening Shankaran Madan. Very good evening all. Yeah. I welcome you all for engage your learning experience with Pantaki Learning. Anytime, anywhere, at any places. We are always supporting to the students in a technical way. So today the interesting topic, so that is the sensors. So today we are going to discuss about the sensors. We know, uh, do you have any idea about the sensor? Do you have any idea? What are the sensors we use for autonomous vehicle like that? Do you have any idea? Say your answer in the chat box. Do you have any idea about this uh, sensors? What are the sensors that are available in market and what kind of the sensors we use for the autonomous vehicle especially? So these are the things uh, today we are going to discuss. So first, what is sensors? We know sensors are the most important for the self-driving cars. That means autonomous vehicles cars. Because they help uh, the car to see and understand what's happening around it. So for that, just one sensor is not enough because the environment can be unpredictable. So that's why the autonomous vehicles uh, cars use a multiple sensors to gather information and about their uh, surroundings like a camera, radars, leaders, like that. So, but it's not uh, just about gathering the data. Here, the car's control system. So, the car's control system also needs to know where it is and what is going around. So, it combines all the information from the sensors to create a clear picture of its surroundings. So, this is what the sensors introduction. So next we are going to talk about the basic simple uh, block diagram to understand the uh, sensor. So first sense. So this sense part, it involves the sensors. That means gathering information uh, from the vehicle surroundings. This sensors can include the cameras, uh, lidar and radar, some ultrasonic sensors and others. So each of these sensors captures the different aspects of the environment such as detecting the objects and determining the distance or recognizing some road signs like that. So next one is the perceive. So what is the perceive? Once the sensors have collected the data, at the time the vehicle system process that information to the understand what's happening around it. Mainly this data to recognize objects like other vehicles, that means the pedestrians or any traffic lights and any road markings like that. And it also assesses the speed and direction of these objects, predict their future movements. Yeah, thank you for your answer, Govind. Thank you for your response. And then we move on to the design and plan. So based on the perception only, based on the perception of the environment, the vehicle system makes a decision about how to navigate safely like that. So these decisions might include uh, determining when to accelerate, when to brake and uh, steering or uh, changing lanes like that. So mainly these decisions are made by the some algorithms. So that uh, take into account various factors such as the traffic laws, road conditions and behavior of the other road users also. So next one is the act. So finally the vehicle takes the action based on the planned trajectory. So this could involve uh, controlling the steering, acceleration and braking systems to safely and navigate the road according to the decisions made by the system. Then again, the act output goes to the feedback uh, to the sense. So this is all about the simple basic uh, block diagram to understand the sensors. Now, let's talk about the sensors. What are the sensors basically we use for the autonomous vehicle? So, first one is the automotive radar. 
So this is the automotive radar. Another one is the camera and then ultrasonic sensor. And move on to the LIDAR and GNSS and GPS and IMU. So today we are going to discuss about uh, these things only. So let's talk about one by one. So first, what is radar? We already know, we already studied the radar. It stands for a radio detection and range. So radio means radio is like a using a special waves. We can't see to understand what's around us. So it's like a special waves. Next one is the detection. So detection is about a sensor uh, could recognizing things nearby like cars or a people like that. So that is called detection. And next one is the ranging. So ranging means it uh, trying to figuring out how far uh, away something is. It's like using uh, some special waves uh, but with invisible waves. So that is called a range. So what is the main principle behind this? So what is the main principle behind this? Anyone please mention in the chat box what is the main pr principle behind this radar? Yeah, good evening, Shen Bhagavali, good evening. Kumar, very good evening. So what is the basic principle behind this radar? So we know these sensors work by sending out some invisible waves. Yeah, happy evening, Shrikari, happy evening. So these uh, sensors sending out some invisible waves and listening uh, for them to bounce back. That means a reflection. So they use uh, different kinds of invisible waves to understand uh, the environment around them. So this is the transmitted. One is emitted wave, another one is reflected wave. So we have to calculate it to the distance from that object. So here these sensors, yeah, very good, uh, Shital. Thank you for your answer. So these sensors can tell uh, if things are moving or how fast they are going. So like that they tell and it uses these some invisible waves, as I said earlier, to measure how far the things are and where they are and how fast they are moving. So it it can use as the different invisible waves uh, for a different jobs like the 24 gigahertz frequency and 77 gigahertz frequency like that. And also it is uh, capable of determining the rela relative motion of the detected objects and are the robust the varying objects. So next is the types of radar. So what are the types of radar? So here you can see one diagram. So the radars consist of two types, one is the primary and secondary. So this primary radar again consisting of the two types, one is the continuous wave, another one is the pulse wave. Again this continuous wave consists of the two types, one is the modulated, another one is the unmodulated. So again on the other hand this pulse wave uh, radar consists of the two types one is the MTI that means a moving target indicator and another one is the Doppler effect. So this is the these are the classification of radar. So first let me discuss about the primary and secondary radar. So what is the main uh, difference between the primary radar and secondary radar. So basically this primary radar uh, it works by sending out some radio signals and also detecting the, some reflections from that objects like uh, planes or any objects like that. So here the time taken for the signal to return that helps to determine the distance and direction of the object. Good evening Shukla, very good evening. Guru, good evening. Welcome back to our day two sensor introduction class. <clears throat> now the secondary. So what is the secondary radar? So basically this secondary radar works differently from the primary radar because here the instead of simply detecting the objects, uh, here it actively investigate them. So this secondary radar, uh, it sends out some radio signals and usually in the form of the pulses as well. So but these signals, uh, it includes uh, some unique identification code. That means uh, the secondary radar, it's a two-way communication. It allows the secondary radar systems 
uh, do not only detect the objects but also identify them and gather some additional information like uh, altitude like that. So this is the main difference between the primary radar and secondary radar. So next one is the continuous wave radar. So this continuous wave uh, radar, it's continuously emits a signal and measures the frequency shift of the returning signal to determine the target's range. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Hitesh Kumar. Thank you for your valuable feedback about my class. So this continuous radar, it's continuously emits a signal and measures the frequency shift of the returning signal to determine the range, to determine the object range or any target range. So what is the main advantage of this continuous wave, wave radar in the sense? It has a very simple design and also it has a high density, sorry, high sensitivity. But this continuous wave radar unable to measure the target's velocity. So that is a disadvantage of this continuous wave radar. So next one is the pulse wave radar. So what is a pulse wave radar? It also emits the short pulses. So it emits the short pulses of the radio waves and measures the time delay for the uh, uh, for the reflections to return uh, to determine the target's range. That is called the pulse radar. So next, under this continuous wave radar, here we have a two types. One is the modulator. Another one is the unmodulator. So basically, the modulator continuous wave radar in the sense, this type of radar continuously emits a signal with some varying frequency or a phase. Here, the modulation allows for a better range and also the velocity measurements also. Yeah, thank you for your comment, Suresh. Uh, thank you for mentioning this one. Mainly, this modulator radar, it allows for the better range and velocity measurements. So by analyzing uh, changes in the modulation, the radar can determine the range and velocity and sometimes even the direction of the object also. That is, that is what modulated wave radar. Next one is the unmodulated continuous wave radar. So this unmodulated continuous wave radar, the signal remains at a constant frequency. So that one is the variable frequency and here this unmodulated is unmodulated as a constant frequency. So this type of radar is a very simpler and also it is typically used for applications uh, where only the range measurements are recovered. So it's often less expensive also and also it is easier to implement uh, compared to the modulated continuous wave radar. Next one is the pulse radar types. So that is the MTI. So what is uh, chance for MTI? Anyone mention in the chat box, what is a stands for MTA? Yeah, thank you for your feedback and Shri Krishna and Masti Time channel. Nitesh Kumar, hello. So, what is the abbreviation of MTA? What is the abbreviation of MTA? If you know the answer, please uh, Type your answer in the comment box. Yeah, thank you, Miguel. Thank you. Yeah, I will tell you um, after a few minutes about the internship course. So, what is the MTI? Yeah, very good, Balaji. Very good. That is the moving target indicator. So, what does it mean? So, this moving target indicator radar is for the things that are moving by uh, comparing the reflections from the different pulses. So, if something moves between the pulses, the radar notices it. That is called moving torque indicator. So, so many of you answer that uh, MTA. So, I am happy. So, that is the radar notices it. That is called, that is called MTI. So next one is the Doppler radar. So what is the Doppler radar? So this Doppler uh, radar uh, can tell how fast something is moving by, ch uh, by checking changes in the radar signal's frequency when it hits moving the objects. So that is called MTA, moving target indicator and also the Doppler radar. 
so another one said secondary letter also it has some types uh, that type is mode a and mode c and mode s yes. so this modes are uh, used in air traffic control while this air traffic some transponders that is a one equipment so responds to the some specific uh, integration signals with some altitude that means mode c and identification that is a mode s yes. so that is called mode a and mode s yes, mode c and mode s yes. so this is the type of the secondary one secondary data so let's talk about the fmc so fmcw what is this fmcw why we use this here basically this is fmcw a radar it emits a continuous wave with a frequency that continuously ch changes over the time what is the main principle behind this in the sense this radar it uh, emits a continuous signal uh, with a continuously changing the frequency over a defined frequency range so this reflected signal mixed with the transmitted signal and produces as a beat frequency that is proportional to the object range that means target range so by measuring the beat frequency over the time this fmcw radar can determine the target's range that means object's range the ob object range and velocity and sometimes even angle also so this is the fmcw so where it is used mainly automotive radar or for adaptive cruise control and collision avoidance we use this fmcw radar and also if you have to measure the distance and speed reduction at the time we use this radar so this is the fmcw radar and let's talk about the fov so fov is stands for a field of view in simple terms we can say the sensor can capture or uh, see at any given moment yeah tomorrow onwards we will have a matlab demo uh, prabhagaran how to visualize the sensor and how to use the matlab apps uh, ground truth labeler app and driving scenario designer app like that tomorrow onwards we will discuss about that things and field of view so for example Uh, if you take the camera so the field of view it describes the area or a uh, angle that the camera can see through its lens if you take the sensors used in some aut autonomous vehicle sensors like a lidar a radar and fov that refers to the angle or range over which the sensor can detect uh, objects or obstacles so a wider field of view uh, means that means that the device can capture a larger area or uh, it can capture the larger angle while a narrower field of view in the sense it can only capture a smaller portion of the surroundings so here the fov is a very essential parameter in this autonomous vehicle applications let's see so this is the fov introduction so i will show you that diagram once also so before we discuss about the angles first what is the main difference between the 2d fov and 3d fov so 2d field of view so in 2d field of view the fov it typically refers to the horizontal and vertical extent of the observable area that is captured by the sensor for example in a camera the 2d fov uh, would specify the width and height of the image that is called 2d fov and next one is the 3d fov so 3d fov in the sense it describes the entire volume or a space uh, entire space that a sensor can perceive in three dimensions so mainly this includes not only the horizontal and vertical extent but also the depth or a distance from the sensor so for a uh, instance in lidar or radar systems used in autonomous vehicle the 3d fov it specifies the ranges uh, distance and angles over which objects can be detected next one is the ranges so let's talk about the ranges so here you can see this is the diagram of the field fov field of view so this is the sr that means a short range radar and mr is the medium range yeah <coughs> or is the long range radar and then talk about these radars 
and frequency range so here you can see the frequency range and uh, the distance and also the angle so here you can see so the short range radar so what is this short range radar so typically these uh, objects it detects objects within the range of 0 to 15 meters so lidar is a one type of the sensor radar i will show you in after few slides so this srr is typically detect the objects within the range of 0 to 50 meters from the vehicle this is called this one so this is the srr this is the srr and range it can cover the field of view approximately 60 to 80 degrees around the vehicle and then move on to the mr so mr it detects the objects within the range of 150 approximately so within the range approximately 150 meters from the vehicle it can cover a wider field of view compared to the ssr sorry sr and then lr and then LRR. So LRR, the frequency range is 77 to 81 gigahertz, and the distance range is approximately 250 meters. And also it covers the 180 to 360 degree meters. Sorry, degrees. So this is the range of the SRR and MRR and LRR. So next, why radars? So, what are the reasons why we choose radar? So, there are a lot of reasons. One is the speed measurement. So, radar can tell how fast something is moving like a pedestrian or a car on the road um, with just one measurement. So, next one is the radar also can try to figure out how far something it is and what is an angle is it like that. And also, it uh, tells the what type of the object it's seeing uh, by measuring its radar cross section. And this is the uh, automotive radar used in electric vehicles. So first one is the adaptive cruise control forward collisions as I said earlier. So these are, these are all the applications. Next one is the camera. So what is the camera? We know the camera uses some special, uh, special sensors. They do not emit any light. But capture the light that already that. So, it's like to creating a picture of an area. So, it's like uh, taking a photo with your phone. Also, camera uh, can see both the things that are moving and the things are not moving. So, cameras are usually affordable and easy to find because they are used in many devices like the smartphones and security systems like that. So, next is the types of camera. What is the types of camera? There are two types. One is the monocular camera. Another one is the stereotype camera. So, before uh, we talk about the types of camera, I am going to tell you the internship uh, information. So, you can convert this master class to one month internship program. So, this is the one month internship program. So, you can get uh, the 30 days of live sessions and 90 days of recorded contents and 10 plus source code for the autonomous vehicle projects. And also the 30 downloadable presentation. So, finally, you will get the internship certification also. So, the actual price is uh, 199, but here we are giving the discounted fees that is a 699. So, it's not only budget friendly and it gives you access to the valuable knowledge and mentorship and hands on experience also. So, this is the registration link. So, don't miss out this opportunity. Join now. So, here we are providing the uh, many things at a discounted fees. And also we are providing another one more thing. So we are offering another uh, one bundle here. So this bundle consisting of the three master classes. First one is the EV design. Another one is the MATLAB Simulink. And another one is Autonomous Vehicle. So during this session, during this uh, internship, what you will get? You will get the 120 record based on this three master class. So weekly live sessions and three certifications. And one more thing, you will get one month internship certification for this three in one bundle. 
and also you will get 1t plus project and this is the downloadable presentation and internship confirmation letter and weekly you will have a doubt session that is the hackathon session and one more thing so this is the uh, exclusive offer three in one bundle so actual price is 4997 but our discounted fees is triple uh, nine so use this registration link to join as an internship user if you want only the autonomous vehicle that uh, fees is six double nine and if you want this three in one course the discounted fees is triple nine so this offer it's only uh, during this 21 days only 21 days live class only you will get the lot of knowledge you will get lot of projects from these uh, master classes and these internship classes so weekly you will have a hackathon session also yeah we so we don't have that uh, hardware implementation of ev system chat we only have the software so in this master class ev master class ev design master class you will have the uh, simulink software matlab simulink software finally you will make the ev half car model so this is the online class mehir so if you want only the autonomous vehicle master class use this discounted fees or uh, use this registration link uh, the, with the discounted fees is 699 and one more thing we are offering the three in one internship offer so ev design and matlab simulink and autonomous vehicle and what you will get in the sense you will get the self paced 120 records and weekly live sessions and three certifications and 20 plus projects from these three classes yeah prabhakaran you directly contact uh, that number prabhakaran and migir uh, for the hardware implementation you directly contact that number through the through that number so this is the internship uh, for the three in one internships are just is a triple nine it's affordable price so join now don't miss out this opportunity so let's talk about the monocular camera so this monocular camera is a type of a camera so it uses a single lens to capture the images it operates like the human eye also so which uses a one lens to focus light onto the retina at the back of the eye so here the monocular cameras are commonly found in everyday devices such as smartphones digital cameras and web cameras <clears throat> so mainly this monocular camera this monocular camera uh, it provides a single perspective of the scene they are capturing so they record images in a 2d format that meaning they do not provide any distance information they do not provide any depth information so that is called monocular camera so next one is the stereo camera so what is the stereo camera so this stereoscopic camera so the other name is called stereoscopic camera so this stereoscopic camera is also known as a 3d camera because it consists of the two or more camera lenses position by capturing the images from slightly different perspectives so this stereoscopic cameras create a sense of uh, depth and also enable the perception of 3d three dimensional space so that means this cameras work by capturing the two separate images one for each lens so which represents the views from the left and right eyes so these images are then presented together to create a some stereoscopic effect so this is called stereoscopic uh, cameras and next uh, we will know about the disparity so what is the disparity what is the formula for this disparity in the sense so this formula is derived from the basic principle of a similar triangles in geom geometry here you can see this is a formula is it equal to f uh, t x divided by t that means f is the focal length of the camera that means it represents the distance from the camera's optical center that means a lens to the image plane so t x is the baseline 
and is it is it is the depth that means the depth of the point in the scene that measured along the camera's optical axis so this is a formula is it equal to f into baseline divided by disparity next is the applications of cameras in av so first one is the traffic sign recognition and speed limit and blind spot detection and 360 degree surrounding views uh, system lane detection and lane keep assistance and then object recognition system and then move on to the ultrasonic sensor so we know the ultrasonic sensors are the sound waves with the frequencies uh, between the ranges uh, frequency ranges between 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz so these waves are used to measure the distance uh, to an object by sending out some sound pulses and measuring the time it takes for the reflections to return so this method is known as the ultrasonic ranging that means ultrasonic sensor here you can see this is the short ranging application so mainly this ultrasonic sensor it's a short ranging application so commonly used in short range applications such as the automated tracking systems any obstacle detections in robotics like that we use this ultrasonic sensors and these systems provide the accurate distance and measurements over the relatively um, short distance so basically this ultrasonic sensors used in adas that means autonomous vehicle so they were first used to help the uh, drivers detect only the obstacles while parking but now they are uh, part of the automatic parking system because these sensors uh, it can help uh, control the steering and acceleration and braking of the vehicle to help uh, it park automatically uh, without the needing of a human driver and also these sensors are placed on the rear bumper of the car so they can see any obstacles up to 2 to 2.5 meter away so they use a high frequency also higher frequency by using the higher frequency and adjusting how much the sensor amplifies the signal and it receives so we can make the sensors better at uh, noticing objects on the ground like uh, wheel stoppers like that so this is what the ultrasonic sensor so let's talk about the important a uh, sensor that is a lidar so what is a lidar what is this lidar so this lidar it's like a special sensor yeah thank you bharatraj singh thank you for your uh, valuable comment so basically the lidar is light detection and ranging so it's like a special sensor and it measures the distance by using the light here you can see this is the lidar sensor by using the light it can measures our surround the world and it's a technology used in things like uh, self driving cars and mapping and here this lidar uses a sensor that sends out the own light to see the surroundings and then this is the lidar we know the lidar sensor is a spin around continuously so it's a kind of like a spinning the a spinning top so they shoot out the thousands of tiny laser beams every seconds so these laser beams go out in all the directions around the vehicle so like a, a giant flash light shining in every direction like that so this is like this is that only and next one is the point clouds so what are the point clouds so here you can see this is the point cloud of the 3d maps so point clouds are like a 3d maps uh, that are made up of the millions of individual points in a space so each point represents a specific location in the environment so it's a specific location in the uh, surrounding the vehicle and how they are used so these point clouds are used to understand and visualize the a uh, surrounding environment of the vehicle so this is what the point clouds and also so a yeah, good lidar sorry a yeah, good lidar uh, scanner it shoots out 8 to uh, 120 like eight laser beams in all the directions to create a detailed 3d map of the surroundings and then these lasers uh, laser beams hit any objects and bounce back from that object 
so it collects this uh, bounce back data to create a picture of everything around the vehicle and then this lidar works together with the gps also to make uh, sure it's getting things right so gps provides the ground truth data it's like a reference point so this is what the lidar's introduction and then move on to the gnss and gps and ime so GNSS, what is the GNSS? We know the GNSS is the Global Navigation Satellite System. It's like a super navigation system in the sky. So it uses uh, some satellite, it, it uses the satellites to provide, uh, provide the precise positioning information all around the globe. So it's kind of uh, like having a map that covers the entire world and tells you what, uh, tells you exactly where you are. That is what the GNSS, we know the GPS, of GPS, that is the Global Positioning System. This is, GPS is a part of a GNSS only because it uses a network of satellite uh, to pinpoint your location on the Earth. And next is the GLONASS and Galileo. So here you can see this is the GLONASS and Galileo and Beto. So these are the other satellite system uh, that work alongside GPS to improve accuracy and coverage so they are like a backup system uh, that makes sure you always have a clear signal no matter where you on the earth so gnss provides the very accurate location data so it's like having a gps tracker on your phone that can uh, pinpoint your location within a few seconds within a few feet so mainly uh, these GNSS is satellite based navigation system that includes the GPS and Galileo and Beijing. So it gives you the precise location information. And then autonomous vehicle use uh, precise uh, for the precise locations they use the GPS too. It can determine the precise locations. So it's trying to figure out exactly where they are on the map. And also this GPS uh, helps autonomous vehicle calculate how fast they are go going and which way they are headed and also this av follows the predetermined route predetermined routes using the gps guidance so it's like uh, following the directions on a map uh, to reach destinations but this autonomous vehicle does it automatically using a gps coordinate to stay on the lane so next is the IMU. So what is this IMU? So this IMU it stands for an inertial measurement unit. So this inertial measurement unit it's like a, spends a special sensor package because this package uh, that combines different sensors to measure how an autonomous vehicle moves. It includes a uh, it includes sensors to measure the acceleration and angular velocity and orientation. So acceleration in the sense that is a changes in speed, angular velocity it's a rotational speed and orientation is the direction the vehicle is facing. And also this IMU it can estimate the vehicle motion and also this IMU uses the data from these sensors to figure out how the vehicle is moving, which way it is facing. So these are all the information we can get from this IME. And also you can fusion with this uh, GNSS data also. So the data from the IMU is combined or fused with the data from the GPS to improve the accuracy. So by combining these different sources of data, the vehicle can get a more precise understanding of its position, speed and direction. Okay, thank you, Absal. Thank you. Thank you for your comment so next is the sensor fusion so before we get into the sensor fusion so first again i will tell you the internship so you can convert this master class into the one month internship and during this internship you will get the 30 days of live sessions and 90 days of access uh, recorded access and 10 plus source code for the autonomous vehicle projects and 30 downloadable presentation and internship confirmation and internship certification also.
So the registration fees is one triple nine, and we are providing the discounted fees only for this twenty one days. That is a six double nine. Use this registration link. So join as an internship user if you want only this uh, autonomous vehicle master class. Use this registration link. We are providing one more offer. That is a exclusive three in one internship offer. In this offer, you will get the three master class. First one is EV design. Another one is MATLAB sim link. Another one is autonomous vehicle. So you will get. Three big master class uh, in this offer, exclusive three in one internship offer, and then what you will get from this uh, three in one, uh, you will get the self paced one twenty records from these three master classes and weekly three live sessions, sorry, weekly live sessions and three certifications and one month internship certification. Also, we are providing the twenty plus projects. And weekly hackathon session that is a doubt clarification session. So the actual price is four double nine seven, but we are providing the discounted fees. It's a triple nine. Use this registration link to join us uh, exclusive three in one internship. So if you separately want the autonomous vehicle master class, so discounted fees is six double nine. So don't miss out this opportunity. Join now. So at last we have to discuss about the sensor fusion. So what is sensor fusion? So do you have any idea about this sensor fusion? So I will tell you one more thing. So tomorrow uh, we will have the demo session. So before we enter into the demo session, I am going to tell you what all the app. We are using for this autonomous vehicle master class. I will tell you. Yeah, Suganya. So please contact that number. You can directly contact through that number for the internship uh, details. So throughout this autonomous vehicle master class, twenty one days master class, we are using the two app, especially two app from the uh, MATLAB Simlink. So I will show you that app. Yeah, very good, uh, Ashwin. So we are combining the data from all the sensors. Yeah, correct. So thank you for your response. So sensor fusion, it's nothing but uh, it's like a team work for the sensor. It's a process where the data from different sensors like camera, radar, uh, lidar, ultrasonic sensor, and GPS. So they work together to give more accurate and understanding of the environment. So during this internship and during this uh, autonomous vehicle master class, we are using the two, especially two app from this MATLAB Simulink. I am going to show you that app. So that is why I open this Mat MATLAB software. So wait few seconds. So it's uh, the sensor fusion. So here is the sensor fusion. We know the sensor fusion. It combines uh, different sensors information. So why sensor fusion is important in the sense there are a lot of reasons. So it can match in the data for the precision. So sensor fusion combines the data from various sensors to create a more precise understanding of the objects or uh, targets. So for example, uh, combining the data from a camera. So the camera we know which provides the visual information. So with the data from the lidar which provides the distance information. So can give you more detailed and accurate uh, information about the surroundings. So that will creating creating a very comprehensive view. So by matching out matching data from the different sensor, the sensor fusion helps to create a comprehensive view of the environment. So that is why it's a very much important and also it balancing the sensor strength. That means each strength, each each sensor has its strength and weakness. 
For example, if you take the camera, uh, the cameras are uh, good at capturing the visual information. While the lidar, it provides the accurate distance measurement. So by combining these data from a different uh, sensors, the sensor fusion can compensate for these strength and weakness. So this is what the sensor fusion and they providing the comprehensive and precise information. And then move on to the sensor fusion approaches. So I will give you the three approaches that is the data level fusion approaches and future level fusion approaches and then decision level. So first one is the data level. So data level in the sense it combines uh, raw data from all the sensors into one big data set. So that is what data level fusion. Another one is the future level fusion. So it extracts the important, important futures from each sensor's data. That is the future level fusion. Next one is the decision level fusion. So what is this decision level fusion? So this uh, it combines the decisions or outputs from each sensor's processing. So that means the data level, it can mix the raw data. Future level, it selects the important details from that information. And decision level, it combines the decisions or output to make the final call. So each method has its own use uh, depending on the situation. So let's talk about the some important algorithms that is mainly used for the sensor fusion. So first one is the Kalman filter, another one is the deep learning based approaches and another one is the graph based approaches. So first one is the Kalman filter. So what is the Kalman filter in the sense? These Kalman filter algorithm, it's like a smart organizers. They use some mathematical equations to predict, uh, to predict an object's current state uh, based on the past observations and adjust predictions as new data comes in. So it's like predicting where a moving object will be next uh, by considering its speed and direction. This is what the Kalman filters and next one is the deep learning. So deep learning is like a super uh, smart approaches in, because they uses the neural networks. So that means which are using a, a system inspired by the human brain. So to learn uh, from large amounts of data to make the decisions, to make the precision predictions based on that. Next one is the graph based approaches. This graph based approaches are like the maps with connections between the different points. So they model the relationship between the objects or a data points as a nodes and edges in a graph. So the Kalman filters it's a predict the object states based on the past observations and deep learning it learns from the data to make the predictions. And graph based, it's a model relationship between the data points to make the decisions. So this is what, what are the algorithms we use for a sensor fusion. So this is all about the sensors introductions and what are the sensors we use for autonomous vehicle. So tomorrow we are going to talk about how to visualize the sensor coverage and detection and tracks. So before we wind up the session, I will show you that during this internship class and during this uh, master class, here you can see we are uh, using the two app. So from this automotive part, we are using the driving scenario designer app and ground truth app, labeler app. So how to load the, uh, how to load these signals, how to load the data through this to this ground truth app labeler app and how to use this driving scenario designer app. So during this in internship and during this 21 days master class, you will get uh, these knowledge from us. Tomorrow we are going to talk about the visualize, how to visualize the sensor coverage and detection and tracks. So thank you for watching. Do you have any doubt about today's session? So how was the session? If you like the session, please give a heart in the comment box. Yeah, Govind Narayan, uh, you can directly contact uh, through that number.
Do you have any doubt? So thank you so much. I hope you can understand the basic uh, introduction about the sensors. Yeah, thank you, Pavan. Thank you, Redivari. Thank you, Govind. Rahul, thank you. And so if you really like the session, give your heart in the comment box. Yeah, thank you so much. So it's same only, but internship, we are providing the codes and we are providing the projects based on the autonomous vehicle. So that is a different and we are providing these PPT slides. So I don't know Telangu Abhiram. Thank you. Thank you, Hemant Kumar. Thank you, uh, Tapas. Thank you, Gaurav. Yeah, thank you, Govind. Thank you, Sonu Singh. Thank you so much. If you have any doubt, please mention in the chat box. I will explain you. So, Gauta, the attendant link is uh, pinned. Yeah, thank you, Divya. Thank you. Thank you, Bharatra Singh. Thank you for your comment. Yeah, I don't know Hindi uh, Singh, Himanshu Singh. I don't know Hindi. Thank you, Srinivas. Okay, Madhu. Okay. So it's only online. Yeah, thank you, Sailesh Kumar. Thank you, Sarvesh Kumar. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks to everyone who joined today's session. And thank you for your active participation throughout this entire session. Thank you so much. Thank you all.